Welcome back to part two of our interview with Mr. Bastio Pandey, former Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. So we were just talking about his, his move uh, from colonial Trinidad uh, in a remote village up to uh, England during the sort of last days of colonialism in Trinidad and a film star actor uh, uh, in, in international films, but a, a lawyer, he was studying to be a lawyer. And he met Eric Williams, who was Trinidad and Tobago's um, independence, I guess you can say independence leader to, to a certain extent. But there were, uh, but one of the things about the problems in Trinidad is racism. And not, not the type of racism that people talk about in general, which is between whites and blacks, but this is between the two major groups in Trinidad, Africans and Indians, although even those groups have all sorts of subparts. But you were talking about, um, Mr. Pandey, to, uh, to resume the conversation, you were talking about Eric Williams, who was chief minister and working out independence arrangements for Trinidad, was speaking at the colonial office and you had raised a point about, um, if you could repeat that. The, the reason I said that um, Eric Williams uh, appeared to be Caribbean, uh, he was really colonial inside. I tell you why. Mm -hmm. When he came to Trinidad, when he decided he was going to form his party, he adopted the British system of divide in order to rule. Mm -hmm. And he must have realized that Trinidad was a society in which the two major ethnic groups were Indians and Africans. Mm -hmm. And um, what he decided to do, instead of having a government which united people, he decided to form a party which divided the country even further. Right. And, and so instead of embracing the Indians, because all his speeches were about slavery and so on, uh, uh, African slavery yes. and so on. And I, and I remember uh, uh, Kapil Deo once asked, telling him, but you, all you do is you write about Negro slavery and so on. Why don't you write about the Indians? And he said, why don't you? <coughs> uh, yes. but, but that's not the point I wanted to make. The point I wanted to make was... I'm going to just... just um, uh, because in Trinidad and Tobago, for the international audience to know, Indians weren't a, just a small minority. Indians were a, roughly half the population, roughly equal in size to the African population. It's That's not correct. a matter of catering to a small minority. It's so a, what, a what, what he did, he, was, he decided that he would divide the Indian electorate. And so he took the Winston Mahabir, and those from the Presbyterian, in, uh, who led the Presbyterian Indians, uh, joined his party. He took Kamaluddin Muhammad, who uh, was a leader among the Muslim community, uh, who were regarded as Indians, to join the PNM. And so he really isolated the Hindus, yes. which, he, which he later referred to as a recalcitrant minority. Right, and, and the Hindus were the largest so that group that, of Indians. Exactly. So that is why I say that um, he was colonial in mentality. Right. That is, instead of have, being a prime minister which will unite a country, he divided it. Because, I mean, it was and divided power it politics. Severely in order to maintain political power. Yes, because it, it was very much a form of power politics that, that he and was that's a colonial And that's a colonial trait. That's right, that's right. And so now, now at the time, as we were talking previously, you said you, you, the whole anti-colonial independence thing didn't really impress you before you leave, but, but by the time you met Williams at the colonial office, had your consciousness changed? Um, I didn't think much about him because, as I tell you, I, I, I was absorbed in, in studying, wor working and studying and trying to uh, become a lawyer. And what type of I'm lawyer becoming. were you looking to become? Um, in those days, you didn't decide that. You took um, some subject and you did everything. You did divorce law, criminal law, uh, land law, you did everything. 
Because many and, of the uh, anti-colonial leaders from around the world were lawyers, right? So you would, I mean, I'm sure you would have met a lot of like Nigerians and Indians and people from hard, all across the Commonwealth, Singaporeans. Hard, hardly, oh. because, of the, because of the fact that I had to work and study uh. and therefore no opportunity to mingle. Right. So, so you were part of the Oxford elite where they might have mingled. You were, you were part of the, the, um, the lower plebes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. I was. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I, which, I, I might, which, which might have been a very good thing, actually. Absolutely. I mean, it shaped, it really shaped. So, so, when, so when Williams was there at the colonial office in about 59 and you were a young um, clerk, was it? Um, uh, it was soon after he had won the elections right. uh, in 57 he came there so it might have been 58, 59 or something yes. if it was that I would have been working as a clerk at right. the London County Council right. so um, and just interesting again about the all colonialism now so you were working at the London County Council and you were uh, were you considered a British subject? As a colonial? Uh, well, I don't know what I was considered that, but I was. Yes. I mean, so, so, I mean, so you was, was employment, uh, were there any bars to employment or migration, for example? Um, I, didn't, well, I didn't feel it at that level yeah. because migrants operate at a different level from those in the, at the upper class. Yeah. I was at the, at the lowest possible but, but, class there. But I mean, you, you obviously, so you didn't need anything special to work. You could have just applied for the job at the county council and you got yes, it. Yes, just applied for the job, and just, job as a clerk. Uh, which you didn't means, need a visa or anything like that? Work, oh, no, I, I, was a, I, I was a colonial subject. Right, right. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, so that's interesting. I mean, and I want to point out this too because it, it defined your your whole career after I would say, which is there you were a young man and Williams was like a godlike figure in Trinidad. I, I, people he was, I, yeah. might not understand that from but 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 he was among many people con considered you know like the brightest man in the world or the second most educated man in the world. They said you know uh, 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 no yeah. no I I think I think it was. No, no. It was said that he was the third most educated yes, man. Yes, third. Nobody told me who was first and second. Yes, that's right. So, yes, yeah, so he was this big world intellectual who was because, leading Trinidad. Because he, he had a PhD. Yeah. And in those days, very few people, uh, and, very few and colonials book, had a PhD. That's right. And his book, Capitalism and Slavery, was, was a groundbreaking book. That's right. That's yeah. correct. You know, throughout the world, to this day, it's, it's a groundbreaking book book so so here you were a young man um w w w was it bravery was it foolishness what uh, w was it temerity what, what was it that that made you you know stand in, in a way it was it was taking a stand i mean were you nervous when you made that were you angry what was your mm -hmm. emotions when you when you were raising that point of discrimination against you know the, it uh, might have been it might have been audacity right. but um but 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 the point is I simply was attending there. Uh, I felt I was a victim. Yeah. I, I, in Trinidad, I felt I was a victim of racism. Uh, by because, whom? By the British? Uh, by the... Uh, no, by, by, the, by the system. Right. For example, the public service, uh, the upper echelons of the public service wasn't open to Indians. The oil fields weren't open to Indians. And in particular, not Hindus, because Indians who were Christian who Christianized exactly. might have got in. Sure. So that that is why, if you look at it in those early days, you found that every uh, colonial young man who wanted to study either studied law or medicine. Right. Because engineering and things like that were not open to him. He wouldn't get jobs like that in the oil field and so on. Right, because it, it, was, it provided independence. If you were a lawyer or a doctor, you didn't have to seek a job from yeah, anybody. Exactly. Right. That explains why yeah. uh, there, there were so many Indian lawyers and Indian doctors right. um, be, because the other fields were not open to them. So I felt that discrimination there. Well, that, and, and what I want to explore a little. So you felt that you were a victim 
and it was in colonial Trinidad, but yet you did not necessarily have an anti-colonial consciousness. No, none whatever. So, no, so, no, no, no. so, so, so the aim to, to defeat that was not necessarily getting rid of British colonialism, but education. Yep. Yes. Getting education uh, was my way out. Yes. And that is why I went from one uh, thing to another, because I thought that was the way out. That was uh, the way that I can become somebody, if I may use that right. term in that way. Um, but when I asked them that question, I, I can't remember, it's been so long, uh, but I was afraid to ask him that question. A lot of people would have been. I, I, I thought he deserved to have that question answered. Yes. And, yes. and that's that, 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 that uh, so, he deserved to have that question asked, right. and I deserve to have it answered. So, so the, um, so am I, would I be right to, to take it that you did not think that Eric Williams' anti colonial struggle represented you as a colonial Trinidadian? You felt I, 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 from his anti-colonial struggle. Is that correct? Um, I don't think he carried out an anti-colonial struggle. I think he okay. carried out a struggle largely based on race and ethnicity in order to get power. Right. Um, for example, uh, uh, we inherited the British Westminster system. Mm -hmm. When in 1970, Five, I think it was. He introduced the Republican uh, Constitution. Act, Constitution. Yeah. It was a change in form, not in substance at all. Absolutely. He maintained the, the he maintained the British system, whereas that would have been a tremendous opportunity uh, in order to change the political system, which would unite the country instead of keeping it divided. And and we had but, that proposal in the Wooding Commission, and he rejected it. Exactly. So, so you could see at heart, he was, a, he, he, he was a colonial. Yes, yes, I, I see. So, so, but as you said, you, you weren't really political, but things changed uh, accidentally when you returned to Trinidad in 1965. Yeah. That was indeed an accident. Yes. Because uh, as I said, I'd got a, a scholarship to go to Delhi, the, the Delhi School of Economics and Political Science to do postgraduate work. And I came home in 1965, I think, yeah, 1965. And um, I came home, I had been in England for a long time. So I thought Was I would Was that the come. first time since 57? No, I had come in, back in 62, okay. when I, after I became a lawyer. And I came back to be admitted to the bar. Right. And I was admitted to the bar in, in 19... So you had to be admitted to the bar in Trinidad? Yes. Okay. Okay. And were your parents very proud? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, 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 so I decided that uh, on my way to India, which was supposed to be there on the 1st of uh, uh, October, I think it was, I said I'd come home and visit my family and friends and so on and so forth, and then head off to India to be there uh, for the opening of the semester. Right. I got, I got sucked into politics uh, by simply attending a meeting with C.L.R. James and Stephen Maraj and Jack Carroll Shaw and uh, George Weeks and the unionists were having in protest against uh, an act which Dr. Williams had introduced called the Industrial Stabilization Act. All right, so let, let me just stop here and unpack a few things, right? So you, you went to this meeting. In England, did, were you involved in political meetings at all? Uh, no, I didn't have time for that. So, so, I, so what brought, took you to, uh, and, and did you ever meet CLR James in England? No, I did not. I did Right. Because uh, just for viewers, who, uh, viewers and listeners who, who don't know, CLR James is a major, great intellectual of Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, he is. He wrote. Very, very well respected throughout the world to this day again. I mean, he mentored Eric Williams 
himself. And then he fell out with Eric Williams. He had the, the Black Jacobins, Beyond the Boundary, amazing, amazing books that, that read. Put, put on the house arrest in Trinidad. That's right. Now, when he was put on the house arrest, that was um, after, uh, before you came? Yes. Right. So you came after his house arrest, and I guess he was released. Ah uh, yes, and he was part of uh, of that struggle with Stephen Mirage and uh, George Weeks and Jack Kelshall and so on. And, and, and uh, that that itself is a story that that can be explored another. But Eric Williams, his mentor, I mean, I mean, his student, his protege, put James under house arrest when James yeah. came to re to report on cricket for the Manchester Guardian. That was. I, th I I think they fell out um, because the G James was the editor of the nation the paper called the nation i think it was yeah right um, yes. be that as it may so, so how did I, you get to this meeting um because you're not a reason, political person the reason i attended this meeting was because of stephen mirage because you see i lived in a in the village of saint julian yeah which yeah. Was, which was four miles east of princess town yeah and yeah. uh in those days if you were ill, you didn't have money to go to the doctor. You would go to the pharmacist. Right. And Stephen Mirage had a pharmacy. Ah. He was a lawyer and a pharmacist, was he? He was not a lawyer. He was okay. a pharmacist. And he had a pharmacy on High Street, Princeton. They'd call it the People's Pharmacy, I remember. And um, my, my parents would go there and I, I, I would go there and so on. Once you feel ill, and of course, he would prescribe it. I and, imagine. And, and he was an MP. He, he was a, a member he, of parliament. He was a member of parliament. He was a member of parliament under the Butler party. Right. First under the... Cuba de Rayabas Butler. And, and just for the listeners of you, he was a great trade union leader here. Oh, yes. Trinidad and the West Indies. He, uh, the, there were riots throughout the West Indies that were sparked by, yeah. by his arrest in 1935. And it led to the whole anti-colonial movement in sure. the West Indies. So yes, yeah, so Stephen Mirage, who was an Indo-Trinidadian, was yes. a member of Butler, Butler's yes. party with the oil industry because Trinidad had this oil industry which is important to the empire, to the British Empire, and and you had met him as a farmer. I, I, yeah, I knew Stephen Mirage because uh, he was all. all or it was part of the extended village, so to speak. You'd right. go there uh, when you are feeling ill, and he'd he'd prescribe something which he had in stock. So you knew him well. You were good friends. Uh, I was too young to be his friend. Right. So that's my father's quite strange. He was my father's friend, uh -huh. but he knew. But he knew me right. because I'd go to the drugstore, and um, so that's why I went. So, I went but, but he personally invited you. No, 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 nobody invited me. Okay, that, I see. That, that, was a, that, that was a foolish thing about it. Nobody invited <laughs> me. <laughs> I, I, I just went out of curiosity. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and so you because, weren't politically because, minded, but you were curious. So that's interesting. Because, because this movement was, was taking place. And, it and was this getting, movement changed your life. Yeah. And that, that movement against the Industrial Stabilization Act was taking up a lot of steam. Yeah. Because the trade unions were involved, they considered it to be a piece of anti-labor legislation that um, restricted strikes and so on. Yes, because Eric Williams, when he came to power, as you say, he was kind of neo-colonial, I'll use the word, uh, colonial on the inside. He, he, although the trade unions were important in the anti-colonial movement, as soon as independence came, he clamped down on the trade unions. That's right. And this was so the this, legislation. So the, so. There was a lot of heat going on at that time when I came back in Trinidad over the acts and people uh, just guarding a lot of crowds, audience and so on. And, I, and curiosity, I, I went to this meeting in Princess Town. And uh, it was a, uh, Stephen Mirage had this drugstore, which was on, on the ground floor. And uh, on the upper floor, uh, he had living quarters. Uh, and after the meeting, but, well, first of all, at the meeting, which was at, at the back of a lorry, you know how they used to have them in those days? Yes. They, they'd put the chairs on the table on the back of a lorry and stick the microphone, the, 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 the loudspeakers all over. <laughs> uh, so 
I was in the audience looking up at him there. Uh, he they are speaking and uh, he recognized me and he summoned me to come and I went up to the lorry and, and he said, come up, go and pass him, come up and sit down. On the... So I went up and sat down on what was then the stage. Right. The back of the lorry was the stage, right? right. Gave me a chair, I sat down there and to my great astonishment, um, after somebody had spoken, he called upon me to speak. <laughs> Um, I didn't know what to say. How did I he introduce you? How did he introduce you? Did he say actor? Um, 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 I, I can't remember. Did, did, were you known for being in the films? That, no, 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 no. Not at all? No, 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 no not at all. Right. Uh, he must have recognized me as my father's son. Yes, okay. Uh, and uh, I, I can't remember. He must have called me Young Pandey or something. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I went on the stage and he called upon me to speak. Now, I don't know what to say because I had been to Trinidad for so long and I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't know what was the whole milieu about. So um, as young students who, who graduate from university, uh, consider themselves to be God's intellectual gift to the world. <laughs> um, I began to speak about economics. <laughs> I had just graduated as an e uh, uh, with a degree in economics, and that's the only thing I could speak about. And I must have speak about a lot of foolishness and so on, but but, but economics and economic theory and so on, which probably nobody understood. <laughs> um, did they politely clap? Oh yeah, yeah. Or, or were the blank stares, or were they yeah, enthusiastic? Or they're politely. Once the audience was there, the audience came to listen to those speakers, and they'd clap anybody who was on the stage who spoke. Right. But <laughs> so you were I, used to I, acting I, in I, West End and, and all. So, so you had no stage fright. I uh, so I, so I, I'm sure I must have got a little um, applause. Anyway, the point is, after the meeting, he invited me and others. Uh, who were on the stage of the meeting to come and have a drink um, at, at his premises uh, above the pharmacy. And when we went there, we began talking and so on. And he asked me what I was doing. And I told him the whole story that I, uh, what I'd gone to work and study and so on and so forth. And I told him that, um, well, I was on my way to Delhi to do postgraduate work. And he looked me in the eyes and said, I, with, a, with a smirk actually, I know people like you. I know people like you, you know. I, I thought, what did he mean by that? He knows people like me. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? He says, you see, there are some people in this world who believe that they can hide behind the walls of a university and the reason is they fear life. They fear to come out in life so they think they can hide behind the walls of a university. You are one of them. Wow, wow, what, a, what an insight. Uh, I thought, what, a, what an insult. <laughs> 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 but it hit me. Yeah. It hit that me really hard. Because he says, where are you going? We are fighting for people like your father who belong to the working class and so on. I, and uh, uh, th there you are, three de degrees. You are going to add another one? Uh, no, no, it has to be because you were afraid of his life. And that hit me really very hard. Wow. And, I, and um, I, w I went home. I couldn't get over it. Wow. And I thought, I wonder if this man is right that I'm, I'm really scared uh, of life. Um, I decided I would pack up the scholarship. I packed it up. Uh, Jack Kelsall, who was part of the, the team that was carrying on the struggle for the, against the Industrial Stabilization Act. A white Trinidadian to just to be uh, Yes, yes. A multiracial working class struggle. That's how he was with Chedi Jagan. Mm -hmm. Um, with which had his struggle in, in, in Ghana. Ghana. And um, 
uh, region wide he, one then too beyond boundaries he, he was a solicitor and he had his offices in san fernando and he told me i will give you an office and uh, he gave me an office in 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 a building he had on um Broadway. So, so that, yeah, that was after you, you, you after I decided the that. Yeah. So I mean, just to get over because this is something very important, and because I mean, to, to this day, people are, are always faced with choices like that. You 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 have a choice, and you're like, you have a scholarship that's been given to you, and now you reject. It. Did anybody try to talk you out of it? You say, why are you giving up the scholarship? You have this. You're going to India. Did anybody? Did your parent? What did your parents think? Your father? Your, did, did anybody? Or, or you just went ahead and you said, "Listen." My, my father didn't say anything. Probably he too. He probably, probably he too thought I was hiding behind the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's amazing yeah, because it, it links into the courage that that you had in confronting Eric Williams. <laughs> As, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, as you talk about that, you remind me of something. I remember when I became a teacher, and I was teaching and so on, uh, in primary school. In those days, after you leave college, you could get a job uh, teaching in primary school. And um, I told my father I wanted to go away. And uh, uh, he was rather annoyed, in a way. He said, why do you want to go away? You've gone, you, you've got, been to college, uh, you've got uh, an education, you are teaching. He said, no, you must bring up your children to be better than you. And it said something about the mentality. He was a farmer, he was, son was a teacher, but his son now must stay there and breed another generation which is higher than him. Yes. And, yes. And you see the point I'm making. He, so he he wasn't very pleased. So he he would not have um, cared. I, I, I think that's a very important point because you know one thing I I am critical about a lot of uh, professionals today who are now in the 60s. Let's say I see it um, that they are actually competing against their children who are in their 30s and 40s because they're still hustling. They're still hustling for a political position. They're still hustling for contract for speaking to us and the, the children are also hustling for those same things and they end up competing against their children it's a That's very true. very important uh, um, thing yeah so his idea was that the, a father will breed a generation which is higher than him but they mustn't go too far. They must breed another generation, which yes. is why they want so on. And, and, uh, I, I think that was his concept. So he wouldn't have cared whether I, I, I went I, or not, right? I, so I, I went on or not and so on. Very, very uh, interesting. Uh, so, so, uh, so you had the, your, 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 um, your stint there. Now, now just, just another thing. So here you are on, on this lorry stage <laughs> with CLR James. Is CLR James speaking? Yeah, yes, yeah, CLR. Right. Do you remember what James talked about? Oh God, no! That was <laughs> that been too but, long. Well, um, you know, in, in tr James was an international figure, well known. I mean, he, he had his, his books uh, um, Beyond the Boundary, which was uh, you know, which is his, one of his his masterpiece, uh, as well as uh, Black Jacobins. But I, I doubt the the Princess Town audience um, were enamored. By, by that probably, they, they probably didn't know much about that, did they? Or, or what, what was their sort of response to James? I think their attitude would have been among these poor rural yeah. farming community and so on, that here was a bright man. Right. And whatever he was saying had to be good. Exactly. Had to, now, how about you? You yourself um, were I not suppose, I, I suppose, I suppose, sorry. What sorry, was I your did. view of James? Uh, because you, you were not political at the time. I admired him tremendously. Um, Why? He had courage. He was, he, he was a brilliant intellectual. Um, did you read I, his books already? Um, no, I hadn't at that time. All I had read was law books and so on yes. uh, before that. So what and gave I, you the impression I, of his... Of his 
brilliant intellect. Were people talking about him in London or anything or what? Mm, I would not know, as I say, because I didn't uh, yeah. belong to that crowd. That's right. uh, uh, But uh, he was very, he was admired. He, and he was he, an amazing speaker. Amazing. Oh, gosh. 